Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our uh, final Four Ps Cafe on IC3D. Um, as you've seen, these cafes will be uh, recorded uh, and you will get a recording at the end of the session. Um, I will not be the one speaking today. Uh, that will be uh, Joel Weiner, um, who is at, IC3, at Creative Edge um, and will present us on automation in uh, the uh, IC3D uh, product. And for the rest, I am going to leave it up to you, uh, Joel. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat or uh, just to speak up during the session. Joel, take Hi. it away. Thank you, Sam. Um, afternoon, my name is Joel Weiner. I'm the product support manager at Creative Edge Software who manufacture IC3D Suite as well as IC3D Automate. And it's the automation side of things that we will be focusing on today, uh, as well as some touch points on IC3D itself. So just going to explain a little bit again, if anyone has missed any of the other webinars in the series, just a little bit about what IC3D is. So you may or may not be aware, I'm sure you are, that IC3D is the first real-time all-in-one packaging design solution that enables you to create 3D packaging mockups uh, relatively uh, quickly and rapidly. And that includes things like cartons, labels, flexibles, bottles, tins, point of sale items, shrink wraps, on sh and on-shelf and in-store visualization. Pretty much everything that you see uh, visualizing this image on my screen now has been created in IC3D or can be created in IC3D and much more. So I'm just gonna give you a little overview movie on IC3D and a little reminder of what it's all about. So I sit back and I'll uh, be talking over this two minute movie. So as you can see here, many different images that have been created using IC3D. Here you see the shape modeler template for creating various different models, as well as different flexible items like shrink films and flexible bags that can be easily created. This is our custom shaped pouch template. And this is coming next week, our uh, tie top bag template for creating bread bags and things like this. Uh, very quick and simple to do. It just shows you some final uh, rendered imagery there. Okay, as well as kind of uh, shelf ready packs with primary product inside that you can see here. We also have um, um, some sort of physics simulation, as you saw there, to create crumples, creasing dents in these flexible bags that you see here. This is our holographic special effects uh, template that you can create holographic effects in, with very traced uh, photographically correct imagery. And we're the only company that can actually do that in a ray traced environment. Okay. So that just gives you a little flavor what IC3D is about. So what we're gonna focus on is automation of 3D packaging design and mockups. Obviously in many packaging workflows, a range of product flavors has been developed and lots of maybe different languages and variants of that single product. Whether that's, whether it's a drink, a packet of chips, crisps, jam, tins, or baby food, the process starts with the creation of a single 3D model that you would need IC3D suite to be able to create that one up of that model with that one artwork or one drink flavor with a liquid inside that is the uh, flavored drink or the artwork on there or the language or whatever it is. And that single model would be having applied textures, as I said, different art and artwork on there, as well as um, the ability to then subsequently replace all of those items I just mentioned, like the textures, the artwork, to develop all those different flavors of that original design or different language variants. So as you can see here, we would create a structural file in IC3D and these little images here to explain the kind of workflow. You would add your shrink films or around the security closures around the neck and top of that bottle, place a label on the front and the back, maybe as you see here, and you'd also put the single liquid flavor in there. And then we'd use Automate to create a different flavor and then replace any of these artworks that you see on there, okay? It's a simple command line driven application that seem seamlessly connects IC3D with any existing workflow tool that you have out there. Uh, that could be like a Kodak Printergy or a hybrid Cloudflow 
or uh, ESCO Web Center or something like that. It will, it's, it's the glue between one of those workflow solutions that are already in existence with IC3D to generate that automated workflow. And this then helps to increase product development speed, um, human errors are reduced and improves uh, time to shelf, okay? So if you can imagine, if you take a single 3D model, single asset that requires five angles, uh, maybe more reflections and things, uh, you would add three output format sizes to that. You would add four different language variants perhaps. So if you do the maths, uh, effectively, you would need 60 renders of that one uh, model you've created. And that's where you need this workflow with IC3D, IC3D Automate, and then your uh, workflow solution, as I said, like a hybrid Cloudflow or a Kodak Synergy or something like this. And that gives you your full automated system uh, that would then generate your 3D uh, pack shots on the fly. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of just to, to explain, just going to play a little movie on what Automate actually is from a visual aspect. So as I said, um, IC3D Automate will open the uh, IC3D design files and run through automated actions that are placed inside a simple script, a command line script that could be replacing the textures, the materials, artwork, or maybe specific camera angles. And that will generate multiple web and print ready files and obviously much more. So the way that this uh, effectively works, as I said, you would take an original model created in IC3D, that model would enter IC3D Automate. You would then get the various different designs, uh, whether it's variants or language variants, and place those artworks into IC3D Automate as well. And then what you get out of the back end is everything you see being conveyed on the screen here, different flavors of the artwork, different uh, var language variants of that artwork, different liquid flavors inside the model of, of the actual bottle and various different file formats as was flagged up there like JPEGs, PNG files. Um, it might be uh, IC3D Opsist links. It can also be movie files. It can be pretty much any export option that you want from there, okay? So just to begin with, just gonna show you how easy it is to create that one up effectively. Um, so I'm going to create this model that you see on the screen on this image now as a quick miniature IC3D demo. And then I'm going to show you how IC3D Automate works. Okay. So I'm just going to switch programs. So we begin in IC3D. We start with creating that background image that you saw. So we would use our dynamic background piece to make this possible. And inside here, I would then look for my um, artwork file. So just bear with me while I navigate for that. So I'm going to start with my image file that you saw in the background there. There we are. Okay, so the background image is these barrels that you saw in the background. So we can create a library of these background um, imagery that we can put in in with our 3D model and merge with them. So it looks like an actual realistic um, background part, the original shots that we're going to create. So we save that to a library. That would add it to my scene in the background. We then want to create the uh, bottle that you saw. So we use our template library to do that. Uh, and then we use the shape modeler template. We have lots of different um, templates, as you can see here, for creating uh, cylindrical objects using the 2D spinner, carton fold up for creating any uh, folded cardboard structure, whether it's a simple box up to a very complex point of sale items, cellophane wrap uh, templates to place exactly what it says on the tin, cellophane wraps that you find around toilet rolls or the outside of cigarette boxes, things like that. Custom shaped SU pouches, lots of different flexible bag types. You can see there gusseted bags, quattro gusseted paper bags, pillow bags, uh, sachets, shape bag templates that add the actual content shape inside, stand up pouches, um, the tie top bag for creating these bread bags and tubes and much more. Okay, so I'm gonna use the shape modeler to create that bottle that you saw at the start because it is an elliptical shape. And the way that we do this is we look at um, the shape of what we wanna create from an overhead view. So it's an elliptical shape bottle, these little uh, shapes that you see at the bottom. And what we do is we draw a 2D shape of what we see at the top and what we see at the bottom. So it would be elliptical at the base 
and then circular at the top. So we just need to construct our model from those two 2D shapes. It's our niche way of modeling. We also have a wireframe editor built in here for very complex modeling, but to get your mindset for if you're a traditional 2D operator over to the 3D world, uh, we've got this niche uh, modeling uh, solution of stacking 2D shapes on top of each other. So you would draw these in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, export them as a DXF file, and then you place them on top of each other, which I'm going to do shortly. To make modeling even easier, we can add a background image inside here. So in here, I'm going to add my uh, image of the bottle that I'm creating, and I'm going to scale that up to 100% accurate size. So I'm just going to put in some measurements to do that in here, because you can easily scale it up. And I'm just going to come in here and make it 98.71. Okay. And then just uh, zoom out a little bit. Just drag this up to the top and fit that to screen so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Okay. So the next part of what I'm going to do is effectively I'm going to drag these shapes onto the artboard and create the uh, model of my bottle. So I'm going to drag a few elliptical shapes in here, a few at the bottom there, one at the top here. Okay, so you can see effectively on the right, it's kind of building that elliptical shape very easily, just to show you how easy it is to kind of build these shapes. I'm just going to zoom in at the top a bit because uh, I just want to create the top piece here. So this needs to sit around about here and then I've got my uh, circular shapes that I need to create this from at the top. So just put a couple of these circular shapes in. As you can see, what I'm doing here, I'm literally just tracing around the image. So once you have the right shapes, um, it's so easy and so simple and so intuitive just to create one of these 3D models very quickly and easily. Mm. Might help if I have my constraint tool on. So I just uh, drag those shapes back into place. Sorry about that, guys. Didn't realize I had that switched off, but it just shows you you can do um, asymmetrical shapes in there without that on. It just constrains and makes the modeling quicker and easier. So I just replace these shapes I've just put in there, just so I know it's accurate. So we just trace around this. If you want it to be 100% accurate to a CAD drawing, you'll see just above here along the top that I'm pointing to now, you'll see the X, Y width and depth coordinates. And that's how we can make 100% accurate uh, model compared to what we're uh, creating. Okay, so we can go in there and just change these things um, to suit what's on the CAD drawing. So I know that this tool is 100% accurate to what we're creating. So we just zoom in just to put a few final touches to this. So we want to curve off a few of these edges so we can easily curve them off. We just come in here and add a curved edge, drag it out to where we need it. And as you can see there, it's created that top piece very quickly, nicely and very easily. And we just do the same down at the bottom side here. Okay, so just drag these into place. We just add a couple of curved edges in here. One there and one there. Obviously, if I spend, you see I've taken like two minutes to create that, but if it took a little bit of time, it'd be even more accurate, as you can tell. Okay, so once we're happy with our bottle, we can smooth it off, and then we can add it to the scene. So it just smooths it all out for me, adds it to the scene. I can put it into position. I can then come in here to my material library and I can see maybe I've got something I've already created for this, some bullet bottle specific glass model. And then inside here, I can come and add in my uh, interior and fill, which means it saves me modeling time. I've only out, done the outline side of it. So I can come in here and model the internal pieces and IC3D would do that for me. So I can say how thick I want my walls to be. Um, the height from the bottom so it might be a heavier, heavier thicker heavier kind of spirited bottle and i can apply that you'll also see here it's got some interior volume metric data so once it's put that wall in there that will become a smaller volume and that will tell me how much liquid exactly i can fit inside this particular bottle so just wait while it just does that for me only take a couple of more seconds just to generate that inside wall for me Okay, so there's my internal wall. You see it looks thicker now. And then here we can apply, maybe I've got a bullet bourbon whiskey. Um, actual liquid I've already set up, so I can quickly come in here and put in my liquid as well. And again, it will calculate the actual volume of liquid that's inside there as well. This was a request to one of our largest customers, Diageo, the drinks manufacturer. Probably heard of one or two of their 
hundreds of brands of drinks uh, that they produce. So they actually requested that as part of their design phase so they know how much liquid fits inside the bottle. Uh, there you go. So we can add that to the scene. Uh, we can then come in here. Uh, we can then add a label uh, to the scene or to the glass bottle. So I'm going to use that now to as a stamp effectively, this label I'm going to apply. So I'm going to create the embossed effects you saw on that glass bottle, the, the letter in that you saw in there. So we put a label in there and this is 100% accurate to whatever size you need in reality. Okay, so I've got my label and using our label sliding uh, technology, which is patented, means I can slide that label manually anywhere or I can fix it using some anchor point tools inside here as an alignment if I know exactly where I want it. So both options are there. We then link this direct, directly to Adobe Illustrator. We have a bi-directional link with Adobe Illustrator. Uh, this will open up 100% scaled document based on the size of that label that I just placed on the actual glass bottle. Okay. So you see that open in here, my plain white artboard. I'm gonna place an artwork that I've already prepped in here. I could design live in real time, but Obviously, if I have the file already, then I can quickly come in here and navigate for my artwork file, and then I can grab it and place it in here. And that's the artwork that contains my vector elements for the emboss or deboss data that you see. And just before I send that back, this has to be set up as a spot color within IC3D for this to work uh, to create the effect from. So I'll update that back to IC3D. You'll see that happen in real time. Okay, and then what we can do now is because it's bi-directionally linked, I can actually in the, within IC3D, look at any spot color that's being used within that file. So in this case, it's this bump. So we'll call it bump and I can give that any material I like. So if we make it a gold for now or whatever, it doesn't really matter. We're just using it as a stamp, as I said. So that goes off to uh, Illustrator. And then that will tell, that will then work out, you just saw it change there actually, but it tells you here when it's kind of thinking about it and then it will display it instantly here as a gold, even in IC3D. So I'm just gonna give that some bump depth just so we can then engage with the bump displacement template. And incidentally, that would be that this would be the way that you would create any kind of print finishing effect within IC3D. So next we'll drag out the bump displacement template. And this is used to create the emboss or deboss elements that you see uh, within we're all on the front of that particular bottle. So put in here the bump depth or the, the emboss or deboss depth, whether it's a minus value negative for a deboss or a positive value for an emboss. Then we'll put in the mesh smoothness. How smooth is the transition between the original bottle's mesh and the new elements that I'm actually placing on there. And then the edge smoothness, how sharp or how rounded are those effects? I could actually place this directly on the label, but I want to actually say no, I want it to become hard encoded in my model's mesh. And then if it is in the model's mesh, I could also 3D print this from IC3D. So I just update it with those values I put in there. And this does all the modeling for you based on that Illustrator artwork that we placed on the label. And then it will actually hard encode it in here. So when I turn it around, you see it actually sticking out from the side. Um, other competitor solutions, they do it as a, as a graphical visualization where you can see it looks like it's got some depth when you look at it from the front, but if you turn those models to the side, it won't stick out at all. Okay, so I save that back to my model. And as I said, I use this as a stamp, so I could move this around to the back and repeat that process or simply delete it as I've used it as just a stamp effectively. Next, I then want to add an actual second label to this, which will be used to place my graphical label elements on there. So this one's gonna be 245 by 100 mil. Okay. So I just uh, applied the second label. All right, and then I link this back to Illustrator again. And this time I'm gonna open up my um, artwork that I wanna place on here. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. So I just wanna show you guys something. So because it's on a large artboard and the reason for that is because it's an angled label and it is like that in reality when you see this product on the shelves in supermarkets or in bars. Um, but what I want to point out here is when we send a label data over to Illustrator, we also send two um, document layers with it. One that's called artwork that you see in the bottom right corner here that I'm pointing out and one called cutout. 
So if I turn off the artwork layer, you'll see under here, any color, any, um, any shape will then perform a die cut operation out of that larger artboard that you see. Okay, so I'm gonna select all of this <clears throat> and paste it across to my new label that we just created. Okay, I'm just gonna pinch that in a little bit this way. And then I'm gonna update that back to IC3D. And you'll see in real time, it will create that die cut operation for me. Okay, so as I said earlier, you can come in here and actually position an actual label exactly where you want it using the anchor point tools here. So I'm gonna position mine 250 mil left to right and about 395 down the bottom. Okay, and then I can apply that and I'll place it exactly where I want it down at the bottom there. To finish this off, we also have a model library of an IC 3D. The model library consists of about uh, 200 different models to get you started. So if you wasn't the kind of uh, designer of the shape of the bottle, but you was just designing a new label for maybe a whiskey bottle, we have lots of different things to get you started that you can just see what that new artwork looks like. So it could be lots of different spirit bottles that we have here. You just drag one into the scene and you can apply labels, apply different materials, uh, and that will help you get started if you're just designing the label. There's things like tins in here. There's things like spirit bottles. Sorry, I'm already mentioned. Jars and containers, uh, beer bottles. If you just want to do a new beer bottle label, lots of different models to get you started. All sorts of things inside here if you didn't want to build your own to start with. This also acts as an asset library as well for maybe it's for uh, customer uh, assets. So for my bullet project that I've saved in here, I might have a generic cork that I can add every time. I might have a generic uh, security cap closure or shrink that I add every time. I also might want to put, for marketing purposes, I might have a whiskey glass with ice that I want to add to the scene. And then I can come in here and I can have a preset camera angle that we we can save. We also have all the GS1 standards inside here as well. I'm just going to apply my bullet bottle camera angle, but just to show you inside here, you can export out at all the GS1 standards. They're all here, these ones here. Every angle you can think of, okay? They're already preset in there. Then we can come into our lighting panel. We can select the correct lighting uh, for this job because as part of that dynamic background piece, we can also automatically revolve the uh, 2D image to create a, a lighting rig from, because obviously you want to be able to light the product with in the scene with the original lighting from the background image that's used uh, for further realism, we can do this. This one's had a few extra highlights added to it, spotlights in there, just to give it a little bit more um, oomph. And then we can swap the views out to our ray tracer and ray trace that to see what that might look like as a final uh, ray trace photographic image. Okay, so basically what I showed you at the start there. Okay, so that gives you kind of a little snapshot of what IC3D is all about and how you might create a one-up of something. So now we're going to switch our focus point to automation, as I briefly uh, touched upon earlier and show you how that works. And the reason why I've given you this kind of overview of IC3D is because IC3D Automate is basically IC3D without an interface, okay? So it's a, it's, it automates exactly what you do here manually. Um, without the need for a human uh, interaction. Okay, so I'm just gonna close these files to show you how this works. Okay, so all I have open here is my IC3D render manager that renders out my final photographic quality imagery of the 3D models that we create. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna just open this pouch up, okay? So this is already a few seconds of my workflow manually, and I'm gonna show you this being automated, okay? So I'm gonna open this single file. And what we're gonna do is once I've got it open, I'll explain in more detail. You see here, it's got an artwork on it, okay? So effectively, I'm gonna go back to automate, but just wanted to show you this has a one-up um, artwork on it, this kind of, uh, Choco Champ flavor. So what I've got here is I've got lots of different artwork files. I've got five different flavors of this uh, same pouch, okay? As you can see here, there's a Coco Ono flavor, Gorillana flavor, 
uh, Greenosaurus or Varium, if you like, or Flavor, or whatever you want to call them. It's different colored artworks with different graf graphics or different text elements and graphical elements on there. Same single pouch that we got in IC3D. And all I'm going to do is literally, I don't have a, a workflow tool um, that I subscribe to. If you guys do, then this would work in exactly the same way. You would set up a hot folder for this, uh, for all these files to be dropped into and then configured for IC3D Automate to then uh, process those files. So this, what I've got is I've got these kind of uh, mini kind of hot folders here that I'm gonna drop my artwork files on. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna effectively pick up that single um, IC3D model I showed you and repopulate it with each of those artworks. It's then gonna uh, render out a low res of each one as well as, so I can see a very quick result of that of what's going on. And then it's gonna render out um, four different camera angle views of the single uh, pouch that I've just shown you as a fully photographic ray traced image. So all we need to do here, this would be like a hot folder. These files would hit a hot folder from a workflow tool being passed along. Okay, and that's all I'm gonna do is do exactly the same. You see here where I see 3D Automate has already started working in the background. And I'm gonna do exactly what it says kind of on the tin, I'm going to come in here if I wanted to do this live. Effectively, what I would have to do, I could do it either by linking to Illustrator or I can do it with a PDF ready, uh, render edits in here. But effectively, I'd have to click on this button yeah. while we're waiting for Automate to do it. I'd have to navigate around wherever those um, those files that we just were looking for sit, and I'd have to call on one. So maybe it was this variant, okay? Then I'd have to update that back to IC3D. So we just place the single file in there. Then I'd have to update that back. And as you can see, it takes a bit of time, takes a bit of time with um, Illustrator or whatever I'm using, I'd then have to come in here, save that as, type in Mr. Rabbit or whatever I'm doing, then I'd have to come in here and then I'd have to export this out and then I'd have to do an high res image and then I'd have to type in the values and the sizes that I wanted, uh, whatever other options I wanted in here, list view, which four angles do I want to choose from my huge library of angles and then export that out and wait for that to process. In the meantime, I would have done one. Let's go back to see how many automators already done for me. It's already done all the low res of each flavor for me, okay? So each one has a low res front view and in my ray traced image bank here, and you can see there on the render manager, they've already started populating. It's already done four images for me and I haven't even done one manually, okay? So each one, each flavor now has four different viewpoints as a photographic quality image, all right? Then we're working on the next one. They've completed those ones. So that's my second flavor already done. And in the meantime, I would already have uh, resaved these as IC3D files or whatever file format I wanted, as I mentioned earlier. It can be uh, saved out as an IC3D file, uh, an OBJ file for 3D file format for taking into another 3D application if you wanted, uh, STL for 3D printing, IC3D Opsys links it could generate on the fly, movie files, animations of those being revolved those bags or something like that, okay? So now it's already pretty much done free, it's done free flavors already in a couple of minutes. Okay, so we now have the first flavor there, second one here, and now there's my third flavor, okay? And now it's just starting to run the second from uh, last file, and then we'll have our final file done for us. Okay. In the meantime, I could fire off another one that maybe it's this product, this Daisy product is just a uh, perfume. Maybe I might want to run it through uh, a different script. Maybe it's different lighting I want to see, same viewpoint, but maybe it's different lighting so I can run that one through as well. And you'll see the, um, in the render manager, it will start to populate and process those new files that we've just uh, initiated. And then I've got this one here. This is a can. It might be a full 360 bank of images I might want to create. And I can, I can certainly fire that one off as well in the background with my different camera angles. 
there's my first daisy one now hitting it. Okay, so literally in the space of like 10 minutes, I've already got uh, what was that, four times four different flavors of 16 images pretty much created, plus all the other ones that will be created very quickly. And this is all running this on a very low uh, spec laptop where it is these days. Um, I've got a eight core um, MacBook Pro. Um, there are better spec machines out there these days. And it all depends the speed on how this runs is how many processors that your machine has as well as a decent graphics card on the back. But I mean, even with my laptop that I'm presenting on now, you can see how quick it is already. I've got 16, the full 16 already. Just to show you, you can see there, the whole list of them has been populating as I've been talking. This is my second flavor again, third flavor. And my fourth flavor. And that's pretty much it. That's what IC3D Automate does in a nutshell. It will um, automate your workflow where you have lots of different variants, lots of different pack shots, lots of different uh, languages or flavors of things. Uh, and you only ever have to do the uh, single model. Okay, is there any questions? Anything else you want to see again? Uh, why these other images are processing out? I haven't seen anything in the chat at the moment, Joel. Okay. Set the uh, these ones is creating 24 different images for me. This uh, can that I've just sent off, so that would be a full 360 bank of images. Again, you can see them already processing at the top there, and I can show you a full rotation on those. We've already got six of those already of the 24, and again, don't take hardly any time at all to produce them automatically in the background. Okay, so again, if there are any questions, anything you want to see again, anything you're not sure of, then please uh, ask. Don't, don't be shy, I can explain anything you want or show you anything pretty much you want. Um, there's another little uh, thing to tell you. One of our largest users, uh, large design agency, global design agency, um, they have Automate in their studios and they're the biggest kind of um, user of Automate. They were producing something like about, I think the largest amount was two or two and a half thousand images in one single day using IC3D and IC3D Automate that they produced for their customers. So very large operation, huge amount of images being produced. Just had a question. Is there a limitation on the number of automations that you can do? Um, not for a price. Um, so we have different kind of price points for um, doing multiple operations. So we have like a two process, six, uh, four, six, and then I think there's an unlimited one. Okay. So whatever you kind of doing. So as you can see, there's a whole bank of images here. Uh, so it's from zero, which just shows you this can pretty much do in a full 360. So you could put a, this in Photoshop and export out like a GIF file to do a full animation of it effectively. Sorry, skip one too far. Okay, and now it's just rendering out these um, daisy ones for me as well. So we have already in like a space of a minute, four different images with, uh, is that five different images with five different lighting environments of the same model. So we can switch out lighting, we can switch out artworks, we can switch out materials, we can switch out like spot colors. So if this was like a um, gold foil effect within the artwork, um, that could be switched out. A different variant might have a red foil on it that can be easily switched out or a silver foil or whatever. So spot color effects can be changed as well. Uh, pretty much anything. Okay. Joel, thank you very much.
for the big finale of our uh, three sessions. Um, sure. To all other participants, uh, thank you for taking part in our Four Peas Cafe. Um, this will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Uh, you will be able to see this on Monday. Normally, you will be getting an email uh, that it is available. Um, if you would have any further questions on IC3D or on uh, one of the things that we have shown in our three uh, webinars, just reach out to us. We'd be happy to get you in touch with Joel or with one of our own specialists to see what's possible. Next week, uh, you will be having your regular fix of Four Peas Cafes again uh, with David, where we will be uh, doing something completely different and looking at uh, several of our apps that we've made for the uh, Enfocus App Store. Mainly, David will dive deeper into our Monday.com integration app into Enfocus Switch which offers you a full print production dashboard, actually, so that you know the states of all jobs at all times. Uh, a second app that we'll be focusing on is uh, very simply called Create File from Templates, which solves problems when creating relatively complex uh, text files in Switch, such as XML or JDF, or a complex JSON file, uh, so that we use a templating engine to do that for you and actually do it very quickly for you. So if you're interested, uh, just go to our website on our event page and subscribe. And I hope to see you all then uh, next week. Um, for the time being, I wish you all a very nice afternoon or morning or evening, depending on what place on the planet you are looking from. And see you then. Bye.